Our security guards won't be able to track anyone down as Barry and Richard's screams get lost in the excitement of Paradise Pier. In 2001, Disney opened one of its most anticipated theme park projects of all time. A long coming second gate for the original Disneyland Park. Disney's California Adventure, or Disney California Adventure as it's now called, interestingly dropping the possessive S. Now I'm sure as many of you know, it unfortunately was a disaster, requiring over a billion dollars of short and long term fixes to create the park we see today. Of all the opening day lands at Disney's California Adventure, Paradise Pier was the most intriguing addition. The land could be easily seen rising above the park all throughout construction, filling Disney theme park fans with more and more dread as the off-the-shelf rides you can find at any local amusement park kept rising into the Southern California sky. For the last 17 years since park opening, Paradise Pier has continued to struggle to find its place in DCA getting some great initial work done during the $1.1 billion upgrade to DCA 2.0, parts of the area still seem abandoned and unfinished. And from looking at the concept art and construction of Pixar Pier opening later this week, looks just like another slap together quick fix that DCA has unfortunately become known for. But in order to understand what's going on, let's take a quick trip back in time and look at the past, present and future of Paradise Pier at Disney's California Adventure Park. On my first visit to the Disneyland Resort in August of 2000, around six months before DCA opened, I have a vivid memory of watching construction of a coaster that managed to loop all the way around the shape of a Mickey silhouette. That initial interest stuck with me for eight years, till I went back in 2008 and was merely whelmed by DCA at the time. Following the rest of DCA's misguided attempts to let guests do everything California in one place, the original Paradise Pier was designed to resemble a modern seaside amusement park. Think of Santa Monica Pier merely an hour down the road. This went against everything Walt wanted Disneyland to be, but tied nicely into the kitschy, hip, original design for DCA. Upon opening, Paradise Pier was the embodiment of everything wrong with the original Disney's California Adventure. This land featured nothing that truly felt Disney. It was a mess of loud, tacky stores and rides with a mishmash of themes and inspirations. Most of its very few rides were simply off-the-shelf models from well-known manufacturers with some obscure theming elements tacked onto the outside. And this land also wasn't safe from the hilarious puns that dominated every inch of DCA 1.0 including Manhattan Beach and Malaburritos. Let's take a quick look around the mess that was Paradise Pier on the 8th of February 2001. Approaching the land from Grizzly Peak, we are greeted by what is, to be fair, an interesting, towering skyline of attractions including the three main draws of the land beckoning us from across the bay. These included the Sun Wheel. The focal point of Paradise Pier is the 160-foot Ferris wheel with its mix of thrilling swinging gondolas and its relaxing stationary ones. Walt Disney Imagineering decided that you could represent California's estate with the motif of a sun, so they slapped a big, smiling, Mexican folk art-inspired sun on the front of the wheel to match its brother, the lovingly deemed hubcap, at the front of the park. It also featured California Screamin', a 55 mile per hour launch coaster themed to, well, nothing really. Its inkling of theming it did have included the Mickey head the loop traversed around, also one of the only Disney features in Paradise Pier, as well as the mesh of metalwork designed to make this steel coaster look as if it was constructed from wood. This ride opened as one of the best in the park, but lacked any form of Disney magic separating it from any other unthemed coaster in Southern California. Last of the main three, there was the Malibuma. The only non-surviving major opening day ride was a simple off-the-shelf SNS space shot themed to a test your strength high striker game. The only thing separating this ride from the one you might find at your local amusement park is a large plexiglass scream shield designed to limit any rider's screams leaking into the nearby Anaheim houses. Now these major attractions were joined by some smaller, family-friendly rides as well, including the Orange Stinger, a wave swinger in which you swing around inside a giant orange. Originally designed to have bee butts on the chairs, these were quickly removed due to damage. 
Also, Mulholland Madness added a second coaster credit to the land with a wild mouse coaster themed to careening around Mulholland Drive. Of course, rides weren't the only thing that was hideously tacky at opening day Paradise Pier. These rides were joined by a giant pink dinosaur selling sunglasses, a giant burger serving McDonald's, and a castle selling corn dogs, all in the small sub-area of Paradise Pier themed to Route 66. Opening 11 years before a deserving Route 66 area opened with Cars Land in 2012. As you can see, if there's one word to describe Paradise Pier when it opened, it was tacky. The Imagineers did do the best with the funding they were given, but ultimately it wasn't enough. Paradise Pier was seemingly designed to be the main draw of the park. It had the most rides in a single land, but most of them were something you could find anywhere, not something you would travel to Disney specifically for. Most fans hated the idea of Paradise Pier for this reason alone. Why put in classic boardwalk rides when guests can just go to the county fair or an actual boardwalk and ride them for a much cheaper price? By 2007, it was abundantly clear that something major had to be done to fix Disney's California adventure. Something major to the tune of a $1.1 billion expansion and redesign plan for the entire park which is almost double the park's initial construction price of $600 million. At the time, Disney CEO Bob Iger had this to say about the park. Anytime you do something mediocre with your brand, that's a withdrawal. California Adventure was a brand withdrawal. The first stage in the multi-year expansion plan took place right in Paradise Pier, with the opening of Toy Story Midway Mania underneath California Screamin' in a space formerly occupied by Malaburritos. This new attraction also brought with a big thematic changes to the land, changing the theme from a modern day seaside amusement park to a Victorian era seaside boardwalk. Out of the entire park, Paradise Pier probably saw the most extreme re-themed changes. The entire area was changed to fit this new Victorian theme, including the switching of the icons with the sunburst pattern now being prominent on California Screamin' and a big smiling pie-eyed Mickey greeting you from the newly named Mickey's Fun Wheel. All of the carnival games were rethemed to feature recognizable Disney characters as part of the attempts to bring the Disney back into the park. Following these changes, the Route 66 area was completely rethemed, with the SS Rustworthy and Dinosaur Jack Sunglass Shack being completely demolished. The Orange Stinger underwent an extensive retheme to become Silly Symphony Swings, based on Walt Disney's short film The Band Concert. Also, unsurprisingly, after much back and forth about how to retheme the Malaboomer, it was decided that the best way to fix the Malaboomer was to have it unceremoniously removed. Two other big changes cemented down this second generation of Paradise Pier. In 2010, Disney premiered World of Color, giving the park an amazing nighttime spectacular and a real reason to stay after dark and also enjoy all the new beautiful lighting that had been added to Paradise Pier. I remember when the first helicopter and hotel balcony video leaks of the show came out and Disney fans were excited at the premise of an amazing nighttime spectacular coming to DCA after the okay, but forgettable other attempt, Luminara. The other big addition was the removal of Golden Dreams and the replacement of it with a classic style Disney dark ride, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure. On June the 14th, 2012, the park was officially rededicated. To all who come to this place of dreams, welcome. Even after all the upgrades, there seemed to be evidence of backstory included in Paradise Pier that was never fully realized. Looking throughout the land, you notice a name that will come up on windows and throughout certain safety spiels of Gustav Tinkerschmidt. The little we know about this character points to him as being the owner of Paradise Pier Amusement Park. Though, most of what we do know about the character really stops there. It gives me a feeling that it was designed to be so much more. From 2012 to 2018, Paradise Pier rode on through sheer goodwill alone. Sure, it was better than the mishmash it opened with, but the land still lacked a real heart. People still referred to it as a carnival, giving off all the negative connotations that come with that name. Disney really needed to bring this Gustav character and more to the forefront, give the pier an easy to grasp story rather than just being a pretty area with some decent rides. Of course, being Disneyland in 2018, these quality, thought-out changes to the backstory were completely thrown out, and a new redesign of Paradise Pier is opening this week. One that seemingly reverts a lot of the quality changes to the land and 
in some ways almost brings the tackiness back. On the 23rd of June 2018, Disney will officially open the newly themed Pixar Pier and the now relegated to half the land Paradise Park. This land will go from announcement to opening in under 9 months, and Disney has been sure to mention various times that this is not just a special overlay for a limited amount of time, but this is a permanent land, introducing four new neighborhoods representing beloved Pixar stories to the southern shore of Paradise Bay. This will see the half of the land containing California Screamin' transformed into Pixar Pier, with anything on the other side of the bay staying with its current theme but being renamed to Paradise Park. Now I don't want to say too much about a land that isn't open yet, nor which I will have the chance to experience for a good few years at least, but watching the construction of this land and looking at the concept art has me worried about the current path Disney California Adventure is taking. Looking at a lot of the concept art and reading about what's coming to this area, seems that they are stripping back a lot of what made the 2012 Paradise Pier great and starting again, rather than fixing the problems that version had. DCA seems to now just be a dumping ground for IPs without any forethought of how well they'll fit into the area. Just take a look across the park at Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, a spectacular ride with an eyesore of a facade. It'll be interesting to see once Pixar Pier opens completely if Gustav Tinkerschmidt's name still resides on the Paradise Pier windows, or if that idea has been completely shelved. Of course, these are just my thoughts on Pixar Pier and the current path of Disney California Adventure, but what are your thoughts though? Are you happy to see all the fun and new characters Pixar Pier brings, or do you wish Disney had have explored the Gustav Tinkerschmidt idea a little bit more? Leave your thoughts in the comments section down below and to keep up to date on all our future reviews, history time and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. For review time, I'm Mr. Luke Carroll. Thanks for watching.